cloud. And then I have to disable annotation. And then we need to start drawing. Let's do this thing. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I've Let's never draw drawn some any, fake grapes. What's that? Let's draw some fake grapes. Let's draw some yeah. fake grapes. I mean, the nice thing about the fake grapes is that there's not a whole lot to them. So it's going to be a little bit repetitive. There's only three things that make them up. It's the, it's the leaves that are at the top, which are actually really beautiful. And they're plastic. I mean, you can tell they're plastic. So when you draw them, you can make them look a little more realistic. And then there's the vine, which I don't even think it's called the vine. I guess it would be the stems. So there's like the stem. I think the cluster is attached to the vine. And then the stem holds the berries on. So that's, I don't know if my terminology is exactly, I don't, do any of your parents um, own a vineyard? Does anybody know the answer to these questions? Ooh, nice rocket ship. Well, actually our, fa our family owns three vineyards. One is in Italy and two are in Spain. So do you know the so, word? Do you know the name for this? I, I should know. <laughs> I should know, but but I don't. I will look it up then. All right. Um, let's let's try. I think I'm going to start with the leaves and then the stem. So um, the there's a there's the long cluster. So maybe I'll just draw the stem first. Woo. Can you guys see that? There it goes. All right. There's my stem. If you want it curving to the left, you can curve to the left, you can curve to the right, you can curve to the right. Um, and then I'm gonna start with the one that's on the top. So I'm gonna find the middle of that leaf and then I'm gonna try and come out equal on both sides. So there's this little V shape and then it wiggles down to the tip. And then this side, it wiggles down into the tip. Now. I don't know if you can tell this already, but um, the, my stem is underneath this leaf. So you can, you can erase that line. You can, you can you use the lines until you don't need them anymore and you can erase them. All right, and that, I didn't even think about it, but that leaf has a stem too. That's like a rectangle. All right, so now I have to think to myself, how did I draw that first one? And I gotta make the second one look kind of like it. And kind of, it's kind of, it could be a little bit bigger. It could be a little smaller. It's kind of the same size. It's just facing in a different direction. So I'm going to go, I'm going to do the same process. So I'm going to find the center and then I'm going to come up on one side and then watch how it wiggles down to the end. That's how I've been drawing the leaves. That one's bigger. I'm okay with that. And then this one, it's kind of seen from the side. So I'm just going to make the other half smaller. And I can because I'm seeing it from a different angle. One of the things that you can do with leaves is that they have these veins that radiate out from the center and that's how they distribute all the water and the nutrients to all the cells that are in the leaf. And then the leaf receives, I think, light. Uh, it looked good so far, yeah. And, um, although, and everybody, this is also a warm up, So we're just going quick. If it's, you could be, it could be completely wrong and it's still okay. Cause we're going to draw lots of stuff today. Ooh, I've got my, could you guys see my candle? I got an orange, uh, a red orange candle today. So pretty. Oh, leave it. What did I do with my pencil? Okay, here it is. Oh boy. All right. So here we go. Um, I feel like we should start drawing some grapes. Um, what I found with grapes is that it, the grapes are the easiest when you draw the um, draw the ones that are not overlapped by anything. Draw the ones that are not overlapped first, and they can go they can kind of go all over. Like look at this one near the leaf. There's one that's underneath the leaf. Maybe we could do that one just so you can show that we're allowed to overlap. So I'm gonna go with a circle. <clears throat> um, the bigger you make the the bigger the, you make the grapes in a way, the less you have to do, <laughs> you know what I mean? So if you, if you, you could make your, your grapes kind of big if you wanted to. Um, all right, then there's the stem and now we're gonna do a grape on the other side. And I think for the most part, the grapes are gonna be circles. Now I'm looking at this guy down here and it looks like maybe the grape like might pinch in towards the stem, but I think if you just stuck with circles, it'll be fine. All right, then we got this other stem that leads out and we'll have another circle for the grape. 
And I'm just, it's almost like the ones that are not overlapped, they're free answers. You might as well just get them first. Um, for this particular grape, uh, grape book cluster, I can't see any difference in the size. I think some, some grape branches, some will be really big towards the top and then they'll get smaller because they're younger. You know, they're like, yeah. I don't know, that looks good so far. Awesome. Um, I think what, we'll probably wind up shading some of these in and you can actually see because of the window, the light, the natural light that's coming in, um, it adds a highlight. So if you wanted to, even now, if you wanted to place a little highlight, um, you could put a circle, you could put a little rectangle, you could just find where inside the grape is the highlight. And it might be, it might be two highlights. You know, it might be two little reflections. Anyway, I'm, I'm going kind of slow. There's another circle. Here's another one that's not overlapped. Here's another one that's not overlapped. And then there's another one that's overlapped, but it's only overlapped by the stem. So it's a, a, a grape doesn't overlap it, but the stem does. And then I'll do one, maybe I'll do two more just because I made my stem kind of long. I'll do the one that's at the very bottom. All right, this is looking good. So now the grapes are just floating in the middle of the space. Now this is the fun part, in my opinion. Um, it's adding the grapes that are behind these grapes. So there's a grape that's behind this leaf and our very first grape. Then there's another grape that's behind that leaf and behind our second grape. So you're drawing a circle, but it's kind of like an incomplete circle because it's hidden. The, the, so you have to draw the same size but then it's gonna be hidden behind. So you only have to do partial. And this should go kind of quickly. And this is where you could make up. Once, you, once you've drawn like so many circles and they're about the same size, you should have a pretty good handle on it. So you could maybe add a couple extra grapes to make this thing look really fruity. And then it's a matter of how much you wanna shade in or if you wanna shade at all. Look at this one. There's one I can put one, a big one behind here. And another one. And, and like the one thing about grapes too, and I just gotta make sure everybody, no one's in the waiting room. Sorry. Okay, every, no one's out in the waiting room. Okay, good. Um, I'm gonna draw this triangle down here. The shapes generally grapes, they make like a triangle shape, like the whole thing. So meaning meaning that there's more and bigger ones along the top and then they get kind of smaller or get less as they get to the bottom. So that's, if you were to sketch just grapes generally, that's what you would kind of think about. And then they do have leaves and they are attached to a vine. So we're kind of doing a detailed one. Yeah, you have a question, Asya? No, just stretching, okay. Um, all right, yeah, cool. Let's, um. I'm gonna put the, all of the um, highlights on each one of the grapes that I see at least. And then I think what we'll do is we'll probably start shading in maybe one or two and it's 10, it's 12 after. So we've been drawing for 10 minutes, which is not bad. That's a good like warm up level of uh, investment. But I think it would still be fun to shade in these grapes. You could switch over to purple. And you can pay really close attention. You want to think about like the moon. So the, right now the moon is going to be like almost completely full tonight. So there's no shadow on it. Now these, the sun is coming from the right. So you can see that there's a light side to the grape and there's a shadow side to the grape. So as you shade in everything but the highlight, you also want to be aware that the left side is going to be darker than the right side. And if you just stick with that simple formula, the left side is darker than the right side. And then you shade in everything except for the highlight. It's gonna be such an impressive cluster of grapes. The only, only problem is if you added like 30 grapes, it's a lot of shading. So know that I'll shade probably for another two more minutes, see how far I can get with two minutes and you guys can finish this later. I don't, I don't think I want to spend the entire class shading on the warm up. We have some space to draw. We have some elephants, perhaps. The 
<laughs> and when I'm when I shade, I like to um, I like to do the the the, the grapes that are next to one another instead of jumping all around. Now, some people like to jump around. It's not, it's not like it's that bad. I just think if you get it, if you sketch, if you shade in a bunch of them together, you'll get a sense of like how the whole thing will look. It won't look all divided. It'll look more unified just in that one cluster. And then you can use your imagination and be like, yeah, that whole cluster is once it's all filled in, it's going to look good. It, it gives you more kind of um, the ability to like imagine the whole the whole cluster. Um, I'm even going to shade in, I think, part of that vine. Because why not? And it's it's brown. I don't have brown, but yeah. think about how nice it would be to have like a brown stem. Wow, that is so impressive. Who is that, Eric? Oh, wow. Eric, nice. Yeah, Thank man. You. These are. I mean. It's funny because you think about, you think why grape, how could grapes be fun to draw? And then you start it and it's like, it's so fun. Uh, hold that nice and still, Melissa. Oh, can you hold I it up? Jenna. Jenna, I knew that. Sorry, sorry about that, Jenna. Hold like that I nice and- I'm gonna change my name on her computer. No worries. Hold that, hold that nice That's and still, it is on Jenna. That's how it is on everybody's. Thank oh, well, you. At least at some point. That looks nothing like grapes. <laughs> no, literally does it. How does that look like grapes? Mine or yours? Mine. What? I don't know. I see Mine. grapes. Move it forward. Move it closer. Um, I can't see it quite as well. It looks like, it looks like the shape of grapes, though. The whole cluster does. Um, maybe if you like unify each grape and not make it so scratchy. So it looked like it, it looked like when you were shading it, you went like really scratchy like this, and like maybe make it more. Oh, more that's more why they don't look like grapes. Yeah, tone it down a little bit. It's like uh, the everyone's gonna have so much energy today. Those colors are gorgeous. Whose is that down there, Stace? Can you tell who's got the? The red grapes. Yeah, Patrick, hold on just a sec. Keep that nice, nice job, and Pat. still, Patrick. Yeah, I like that. I like the um, the uh, parts that you left for the highlights. Okay, how's yours going? Good. Still trying to shade in all the grapes. Trying to do them all. Yeah. Lassia, how about yours? Can I see yours? Can we move it a little closer? Nice. A little bit closer. Yeah, your vibe. There you I go. Think, your stem looks your stem looks nice and dark. At least from here. The stem stands out a lot. Um, you want to color in those leaves? Let's see. On my grapes, you can't even see the stem. There's so much grape. There's so many grapes. It's like Lassie, it was a little hard to see because it was far away. That's improving. Those grapes are improving. Good work. Mine looks nothing like grapes. <laughs> um, well. <laughs> They're not even circles. <laughs> Why did you move? Did you make them ovals? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> The uh, well, grapes can come in all different shapes and sizes. Um, Eric, you're really Spencer, right? Am I am I getting that right? Okay, cool. That's what I thought. Yeah. Um. So yeah, grapes can be consistent sizes. I mean, typically, in this case, they're the kind of the same size. So if you made like some that were huge and some were small, but on on, on when I'm thinking about a grapevine, I uh, I know there's big ones and small ones on the same vine, so. Uh, is oh no, yeah, but this will be this will actually be a two minute warning because now it's ten eighteen. I'm gonna try and shade in as many as I can before eight twenty, and then we'll switch over. What are we drawing today? 
Um, I was going to draw the surface of the moon in a cartoon way and then sketch some animals. Does that sound, does that sound good? Um, it's a little cartoony, and especially after we went from like realism, like drawing the actual, like things that look like real grapes. But I think it, there's some fun forms in there. And it's a lot, it's going to be a good balance between drawing straight lines. And straight lines. What's that, Kate? I'm done shading most of my grapes. You did. Let's take a look. Yeah, you really emphasized that shadow on the left side. I need to do that further. That looks really good. That looks really yeah, good. Yeah, I need to do that. As it's not that I forgot. It's just sometimes you have to like look at the. Uh, it's not that you forgot, but then you were looking at mine and then you realized that you forgot something. Well, you just have to look at the, you just have to keep looking at the grapes, the actual grapes in, in the scene. That makes the difference. And I was kind of this drawing, I was drawing of, the grapes uh, like uh, in my own art mind. project I did in like second grade. Uh -huh. And we had, we, you picked like the, all these plastic fruits out and then you had to like put them in like a way that, and then you had to draw them and paint them. Yeah. And I did, I remember doing grapes on mine and the grapes were like behind an apple and the apple was in front of a banana and it was really confusing. Was it, was it at our school or a different school? Uh, different school. Okay. Um, okay, let's, you guys ready to try this next thing? Here we go. Um, I will finish this later because it's going pretty well. <clears throat> All right. All right, so the line that we're gonna have to start with, I'm just gonna tell everybody, um, you wanna start with the line that goes on the base of this picture. So that's where you wanna get this set up first. And then I'll show you the picture. Um, this next picture is also, like I said, it's, um, it's supposed to be the surface of the moon. So you guys can use your imagination like a lot. Um, all right, cool. That was almost exactly positioned. Yes. Yes. Move this. We're drawing here. on the moon. <laughs> we're drawing. Yeah, we're not drawing the moon. We're drawing on the moon. Um, all right, cool. So we've we got. We traveled we, from Grape Land to space. Yeah, space. And I don't even think it's outer space. I just think it's like space. Um, anyway, so let's build the platform. And we're going to sketch this line really lightly. We're gonna do the back. You wanna think about this like a school play, okay? So th we're not actually drawing the moon. We're basically drawing a stage set um, where actors could pretend to be, you know, you know astronauts on the moon. Um, so the stage set is going to be like everything below um, this arc. So let's get the arc in there. And then that's gonna be the area that we get to draw in. So we have the bottom of the picture here. And then we're gonna get the back, basically the curving. If you look up the moon, it's round. So if you were to draw the moon, you would like have kind of like a rounded edge. Um, and then maybe we could put in some background before we even do the objects. And the background is kind of fun. Like they, they're using these like craggy triangles for mountain ranges. And you wanna think about what we just did with the grapes. So if you have one triangle, you know, you want to draw the mountains that are not overlapped. And then you can draw the mountains behind those mountains. And I'm just using triangles. And if you had other interesting ways, I'm looking at these two, um, you know, mountains right here. And like, you can make them a little bit more jagged and make it more look like, you know, like kind of like soft hills. You can make it more look like what you would imagine the surface of the earth, the surface of the moon to look like. But these are all background. And the way that the mountains overlap is that it, it like shows that one hill is in front of the next hill, which is in front of the next hill. And Kate, when you were talking about drawing the fruit on the table, it's kind of like the same thing. It's like the apple is in front of the banana and then the banana is in front of the, so, and, and look at this cluster. There's like three in a row. So it's like, one triangle, two triangles, three triangles, and I might just keep it going. Four triangles, five triangles, six triangles, and they're going way off into the distance. 
which is kind of a fun thing. Um, yeah, Kate, as if anybody had, anybody, you might have to unmute yourself if you're trying to talk. Kate, what, you, what are you thinking? It looks good. No, oh, thanks. There's this little independent mountain range over here, one in the middle and then two on either side. Cool. Um, all right, should we, draw, should we draw some craters? Let's draw some craters. I mean, I think we might just go from like left to right. So this is this, is this little design that was from like the hidden pictures. Oh wait, let me straighten this out. And then if that's straight, then this goes up here. Oh, wow, that is so much better. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this, but there's a ring. There's like a diamond ring hidden inside of the crater. So ah. it, you can think about drawing the ring or you can think about drawing the crater. So if I draw, if I go up here, I'm gonna draw an, a, like a circle seen from the side, which is called an ellipse. So it's basically a pinched circle. I can do an outer ring, I can do the inner ring. And that could be the crater. And then it's almost like, like a, you almost think about it like a rabbit hole, you know, like it's been piled up a little bit. So the way that you draw the sides of it, it shows that it's a little mound, like a little mount. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna get in trouble for this, but I think I'm gonna sketch a little bunny rabbit inside of there, if you guys don't mind. I know they don't belong on the moon, but still. <laughs> if I have an idea, I like have it's to go cute. with it. He's a little flopsy. He's got a little flopsy. Oh. Ears. <laughs> he looks like he Tucker. Is cute. He looks like Tuck Tuck. You think? I think so. Oh. Um, and then maybe we'll put a carrot outside. Now this is definitely moving into not outer space, but that's okay. <clears throat> um, if you wanted to, you could still put the diamond ring on there. Have you never heard the story about the rabbit on the moon? Oh no, I have. There is a story about the rabbit on the moon? Well, so in, in, in like Eastern cultures, especially China, they see a rabbit that has like a mixing a potion. Oh yes, yes. Yes, thank you for the reminder. Is that what you're about, Kate? There was literally now now you're drawing the story. <laughs> you're drawing the rabbit on the map. I can't help it. It just happened. Um, okay, so again, everybody, if you if think of things that are better than the one that we're looking at, go for it. Um, I just put the like a shadow. So like watch this. If you like show that there's the inside of this. Um, meteor hole, supposedly. You could add shadows on the inside of it to make it look like it's a hole. <clears throat> All right, then I think we'll move over. Maybe we'll try some moon rocks. Um, let's try some moon rocks. I'm looking at this guy here. And maybe I'll do like a square base. So there's like the front of the rock where it hits the ground and then the side of the rock. And then I'm gonna climb up from there, up, across, and then that is in front of this one, up, across, and down. There's a little clut, little rock on the ground, a little moon rock on the ground. Um, up, across, and down. Let's see if I can find this for you guys. Um, there was an auction that um, in, in New York, Christie's. Christie's is usually a um, an art um, auction house. They sell art, but they often sell real estate sometimes. And in this case, they were selling all kinds of interesting rocks. And one of them was a lunar, a lunar rock. And it sold for like a lot of money, way more than anybody was expecting. I hope I can find the, if I can find the, uh, the photo. Well, here you go. Oh, yeah. Does it look much like this, Trevor? Did I send it to you, Stace? 
This was a, no, a couple this weeks is ago. The one that, Mor that Morgan has. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you see so it? Like, it was like a meteorite. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, guys. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find it. Hmm. But it's quite similar to this, right? Yeah, I just wanted to find the actual auction records to find what the cost was. I think I went too far. Too far. I've got a lot of good pictures in here. All right, sorry to slow it down. Um, the uh, I'll I'll find it for next week. It was like, I, yeah, I don't I don't even want to say, but it, it sold for a lot of money. It was really interesting. <laughs> And it was really a beautiful, beautiful stone too. All right, so the way that this artist seems to like create some kind of texture is like completely with straight lines. So um, a lot of times you can build rocks. We've we've had some curving lines with the with the with like the meteorite, but like now I think he's using clusters of straight lines. So like um, I didn't see this as we were starting the rock. But as we're working on the rock, I can tell that the only lines that he used were straight. And that will kind of make that rock consistent and um, unified. And you could add more if you wanted to. You could add a little set of small ones. And there's some like smaller straight line rocks next to it. It's like there was a five-sided rock. It almost looks like a flat disc. <clears throat> and that's kind of where I like the heart shaped rock like really stands out because I think the reason it looks so awkward is not because it's, there's a heart in there, but because it's made up entirely, but the heart is so curvy and all the other rocks on the moon, including the mountains are all straight lines. So what if I did both? What if I made the heart shaped rock, but instead of using curve lines, I'll try to make the heart shaped rock out of straight lines. I don't know. <clears throat> you can use curves if you want. I like, I, I think straight lines are so useful to the artist. But I mean, curve lines are gorgeous too. You just have to kind of have a balance. You know, this drawing has plenty of curves, but it's mostly straights. <clears throat> We've got this little, there's a little, uh, crater, little lunar crater. I'm gonna do a little guy. Well, it's little compared to um, the rabbit hole, but it's big compared to this one that I'm putting in next. I bet you there's some really small ones off in the distance. So much so you might not even see the mound. And once you've drawn that one crater, I don't know, it's kind of fun. You can kind of get the hang of it. And you can draw more. And they are holes. Uh, well, they're more like basins. They're kind of like the walls go up and then they flatten out in the middle. Interesting. So I'm adding a couple extra ones. This space station up here, like whatever their little, little space rover, it's not particularly well drawn, to be honest with you. So I might not, I might even, I might even try to leave that out. Because it's overlapping some of my mountains, which I'm really liking. <laughs> Stacy, how's yours going? Uh, well, uh, I'm actually working on the grapes because they have just, I fell in love with them and I'm a little slow. So I thought that I would continue with the grapes. Oh, really? How's your space? Space looks good. The lunar surface. Oh, Melissa, hold that up. Jenna, 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 I called you <laughs> Melissa. Again. Oh, very good. Oops. Kate, how's the painting? Very nice. Thank you. Good. Cool. 
These look great, guys. Yeah, very nice. I mean, should should I put in this little lunar rover? Yes. What else should go on the moon? Nice, Patrick. Oh, I can make a little dome, make a little biodome. You could do an astronaut like out in space. Uh, yeah, I'll just I'll invent that one. Okay, so there's a there's his helmet. I'm gonna use a cube for the suit on his arm on his body. Then I'll use a series of cylinders for his arms. Uh oh. Oh no. Does it look like an astronaut? Yeah. Stacy it kind Miller. of looks like a robot, but. Yeah, he looks a little robotic. I'm going to throw a thumb in there. I feel like he needs a thumb. Well, I think <clears throat> that they are a little robotic because they can't, they don't have the mobility that you might want them to have or think they would have. Whoa. My guy looks like he's stuck underneath the love rock or the heart rock. Uh, yeah, his foot is caught. His yeah. foot looks like it's <laughs> stuck under the rock. Oh gosh, that's it, it's okay. He'll get out, we haven't heard any. Or he's just behind the heart rock that's making it. He'll be coming behind the heart rock. It's amazing. Sometimes, sometimes drawings, they go in a direction that you don't expect and that's okay. Um, notice on the, there's some smaller rocks and there's some smaller textures. You don't wanna miss out on that. Like it's easy to see the big stuff and you should put the big stuff in first, um, but you can also add the little, little things. So I'm gonna go around, <laughs> this is the best I could do for my, ooh, maybe I'll put a reflection of the earth on his helmet. He's looking down at his home planet, unless he's an alien. Correct. As I drew him, I was not. So thinking. what could he, what could be he be holding in one hand? A carrot. He's going, he's going rabbit hunting on the moon. Okay. Because he heard the story. Right. Um, also, I, yeah, so I, that's what I'm doing. I'm putting little rocks and little texture notes, smaller little lunar rocks all over, and maybe some more craters, and maybe a couple more. And I can actually darken up my, I, I had, there was all this stuff overlapping the, the edge of the moon, the horizon line, but since I took out the, uh, I didn't put the little space station in there, so I can actually, it's only overlapping in this little teeny bit. And then I realized that there's probably stars out there, right? There's like stars in the sky. Yeah, how about a shooting star? He's walking on the moon. There's obviously gonna be stars. Obviously. Even if we can't see them from Earth. Oh, and we can see stars from Earth. Not in the daytime, I guess. But not like, but I mean at night, like not, not like you don't see a lot of them. Because, probably, you probably see more from the moon, I would imagine. Yeah, but cause in Maryland, uh, you don't see uh, the, the stars as much, but when, if you go to like Florida, you see a bunch of stars. Yeah, you gotta get out into the country where there's not a lot of light. Light from the uh, light from the city. Okay, it's ten thirty-eight. Let's do two minutes on this on this one, and then we'll we'll move. We'll switch. We'll switch gears again. But try to do as much as you can in this little window. I don't know if you noticed this, but there's a paperclip in that in the 
the tread of that little rover. Mm -hmm. I think there's a crayon right here. Who puts a crayon on the moon? Who puts a paper clip on the moon? Who puts oh, an, a racquetball? Like a tennis racket. It looks like there's a tennis, <laughs> yeah, racket. tennis racket. Oh, is that what you were saying, Stacy? Maybe I'll give this guy a tennis racket. Yeah. Tennis racket has an inner rim, has an outer rim. Maybe he's trying to hunt for the bunny on the moon so he can play tennis with the he's bunny. Looking, he's looking for a tennis partner on the moon. I believe it. Going bunny I hunting. believe it. I believe anything. Want to play with the bunny on the moon? So you should, probably should put some tennis balls down there. All this astronaut wants is a friend. <laughs> Aww. That's all he That's wants. That's so sweet. Play. He has a friend. It's Mr. Rabbit. But he hasn't but, found the rabbit yet. He's looking the opposite way. Rabbit. Should I give him a friend inside the uh, biodome? There you go. There you go, Kate. He's got a friend in the biodome. But the friend's not even helping him. So how is it a true friend? Well, I mean, the friend might be cooking inside and he's going out hunting. And why would Play like tennis all kind, there's like all kinds Why of jobs. His friend play tennis with him. I mean, the friend could be in front of the instrument panel, directing the astronaut where to go and where not to go. Well, he didn't do a good job with that because he got stuck underneath the heart rock. And his friend's <laughs> not helping him. <laughs> all right, we're gonna switch again. That one was fun. That was quite the adventure, I have to admit. <clears throat> Whoa. Is that nice and still? Whoa. This is, you guys want to try something that might be kind of hard? Sure. I mean, it might be really hard. Yeah, we'll try it, it though. something that's hard. Let's try it. We'll try it. You always scare me. You say that. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. Um, it's gonna help though. And is it an animal? No, it's an astronaut. Ooh. Oh, he's a very happy astronaut. I feel like it's kind of a happy astronaut. It's a lot though. That could be hard. But you know, it might not be a lot, but it, it looks a lot with all the lines. I know. Do you, I? Are you guys? Do you guys? Do you guys want to try? I. I'll, I'll. We'll make it this way. We'll make it this way. We'll first draw the face because, and then we'll build out from the face. And I think if we build out from the face, li little by little, it'll it'll be good. So no, not little by little, line by line. Line by line. All right, so this is the first one. And this is why it's going to be, I think it's actually going to start easy. Because look at this. Just do a circle for the face. And then everybody knows how to do a smiley face. So there's a eyes, nose, and then smile. If we start there, just start with a circle and a face. And then we can actually give some hair too. It's a circle of the smiley face. That's how we're starting. Um, <clears throat> and the next thing we have to do like the the um, the earbuds. So we can't, there's no more, uh, everything else now is the suit. Okay, so once we do the face, everything else is gonna be the suit. So let's do the earbuds first, which is just gonna be a circle on the side and then another circle on the other side. Um, and then the head, you know, the it's almost like there's a mask, like there's like a frame, there's like a frame around her head before you get to the big part of the helmet. Hold so the helmet. Um, above the circle, from circle to circle, it's almost like a headband. And then it goes down the side as well. This is this is going fine. This is going fine. It's line going for fine. Line. You mess up everything. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Kate, so dramatic. 
Um, all right, so we've got the face, we've got the headset. We're gonna take pictures of all these, uh, your moon your moon existence. That moon is unbelievable, by the way. Um, so yeah, um, congrats, man. That was good stuff. Let's see. Um, Spencer, like unbelievable. And you're doing it in the car, so um, well done. Um, okay, so let's do the next part of the helmet. So there's two parts of the helmet that I'm gonna do next. Um, the one part, which I think is probably the probably, you know, I think it's probably the next the not the next logical state because it actually touches the chin. We're gonna do the base of the helmet, and it's gonna come across and hit her chin ever so slightly, and that is a, you know a double layer frame. And it looks like I'm about to make her um, helmet really big, which is, it's okay. I mean that kind of makes sense. Um, and then we're gonna come up from that side. And we're going to put in this rainbow arch across the top. And this is the outside of the glass of the helmet. And there's lots of things that are going on interesting with that helmet. There's like three stripes on the top here. There's three stripes on the side here. And it looks good. I'm going to actually shade in this little spot there. Yeah, I have a request, Trevor. Yeah, Stace. Could he, uh, in the space right above his head, perhaps have his initials, whatever yeah, like they may like be? Like a TT? Yeah. For Trevor Twist? Sure. Are, exactly. are you on the moon now? I'm trying to go to the moon. I, 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 if I had the opportunity to go to the moon, I would go. Maybe you have a twin brother and your parents named your twin brother that you didn't know about Trevor Twist too. Uh, okay. Or the, can't this be a self-portrait? Sure. It's self -portrait. Yeah. It's me. Mm -hmm. All right. So <clears throat> the base of that... Um, Instead of your hands being up, you should put the hands holding a computer and you're on your art class. So I would zoom... You think I could zoom my classes from the moon? Yeah. I would teach a class from the moon. Yeah. And then we um, would just draw moons all day. Yeah, it'd be like, we'll be like, here, there's a moon rock. Let's just draw it. That, that looks sort of like um King Tut in his mummy form, smiling uh, and listening to music and earbuds. Yeah. I actually really like that. I like that idea a lot. Um, the I base of that helmet that had the um, has a whole collar. So we'll add a thick part. And this is like the attachment probably, you know, to the suit portion. So there's like a little circle on this side and a circle on that side. That could be like a screw maybe. Um, okay. Um, and then the what I think is the easy part is where the arms are attaching to the suit. So we're going to do the front of the suit first. But let's just do like where the arm, it's like you can think about like where your sleeve, where the sleeve gets stitched. You know, that's what these lines are. It's basically just like the arms of the suit, um, you know, attaching. And... Um, there's on the front of the suit, there's a box and it could be anything. It could be like a battery, could be food, could be a first aid kit, but this is where you can practice your three dimensions. You know, you do draw the front of the box, which is a rectangle. You can draw the top of the box, which is another angled square a rectangle. And then there's the side of the box. It looks like it's like got like some strap attachment. So. I can draw the strap along the top and along the front. That was kind of cool. The nice thing about the box is that that guides us right into the belt. And, you know, the belt, there's some kind of like crescent moon clip here. You know, they could, they could look like croissants. It looks like a C and a backwards C. But that's like the, how they make the belt buckle. That's the belt buckle. And then we'll make the belt go to the side. And it's just going to be two rectangles to the side. And now we've got like the head, the top of the suit. Um, and then we need to put in like um, the, the bottom of the suit. So every, like the, we'll call it the, uh, call it just like the bathing suit, like part. That will be below Is the belt. Is that the right term for it? I mean, it looks like a bathing suit. Okay. And then that is the part that you need to have, um, you know, basically the legs attached to. 
And the legs are um, the, the basically the first thing that's overlapped in this drawing at all. The first thing is being overlapped are the legs. So you can think about the grapes. We did the grapes that were overlapped, that were not overlapped first, and then we did the grapes behind it overlap. So which leg should we do? Probably the left leg. And then when I think about legs, you got to go hip to knee and then knee to ankle. And then because the, the whole point of this guy is that he's in space and he's not standing, he's like, he's flying. And actually there's, he's got a jet pack on. Um, so we can make the shoes, like he's almost like, on, like standing on his tippy toes. So there's like the front of his foot, like the top of his foot and then the tread. So I'm gonna intentionally make the tread look like a, a, like a space tread. All right, so we got the bathing suit part of the suit. We've got hip to knee, knee to ankle, and then the, the, the space boot. So let's do the same thing on the other side. And the other things, the other side's gonna be smaller um, because it's overlapped. So we've got the hip to the knee, knee to the ankle, and then the top of the foot, which is pointed down. It's pointed down because he's flying in the sky. Not in the sky. I guess it's technically the sky. He's flying, he's flying in outer space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, so those are the big major um, sections. So I think we should detail them. Um, we've got an extra, we've got an extra loop here um, near the box. Like it looks like it could be like a backpack strap or something. There's little clips on there. Um, the bathing suit part has some straps on that, obviously. I feel like everything's gonna have straps because everything's gotta stay, everything's gotta stay together like really tightly strapped together. Um, there could be like a little, like, you know, a hole here that you could throw in a, um, like a tube. Looks like they're, I think these are supposed to be knee pads. The knee pads. Yeah, I love the those. The knee pads go where the knees go. And it's just gonna be a square, an outer square and an inner square. Outer square, inner square. And then, I mean, and then more straps. And I don't know if they're straps or if they're like folds. They could be like space folds. folds. Or I don't think it matters. It just matters that they go sideways. <clears throat> um, and you want the, if you put a strap or a, a wrinkle on one side, do it on the other. If you have a curve on the left, do it on the right. So you, we want both of these, you know, both of these things to look, um, so we, want, we want it to be symmetrical. Um, just like the straps on the, uh, you know, the bathing suit part, the top of the boot has straps running long ways. And then they also have straps going sideways. Nice. Oh, he's got a little toe cover too. All right, I'm gonna have to fill in the toe cover because I didn't see that. The straps go underneath the toe cover, but it looks good. I actually like I like the toes covered anyway. I have the I have a boots that have steel tips on them, um, and you can't see them from the outside. But if you try to press on your toes, you can't even feel your toes. It's just metal, and I imagine it's you know that's so if like a piece of wood or metal falls on your foot because your foot sticks out, you won't break your toes, and that's probably I I would imagine that these astronauts have steel tip boots. Oh my goodness. Um, uh, is this looking good? Is anybody, is everybody having a good time with it? It's not as hard, it's not as hard as I thought, yeah. Boom. <laughs> it looks like a space. Oh, Jenna. <laughs> it looks oh, more like a space than, than, than grapes. So that's good. Um, all right, so we're gonna do uh, shoulder to elbow and then we'll do the gloves. No, shoulder to elbow, elbow to wrist, and then the gloves. And it'll be lots of straps. So let's just do this. I'm going to zoom out a little bit because my my Egyptian, <laughs> he looks so Egyptian. Um, my Egyptian astronaut has gotten kind of big. So let me move this over. Okay. 
So let's do a uh, shoulder to the elbow. And then it's going to turn in the elbow. He's like, it's almost like the guy's holding his hands. He's like, look, no hands. I'm floating with no hands. And then we'll go elbow to wrist. And trust me, we're going to add straps to that. Um, we'll go shoulder to elbow, elbow to wrist but on both sides. Hopefully they're kind of close to the same size. And then I'll show you guys how to do hands now. And this is whether you do really fine details on hands or whether you, um, you know, keep it really simple. You can do hands like this for the rest of your life. So you want to get the um, palm, which is a rectangle. Well, they're not really hands. They're more the gloves. They're gloves. Yeah, they're gloves. But in order to position fingers, um, you know, the, you have to, you have to know this part. So it's the palm and then it's the mitten portion. So you have draw the palm first, then you draw the thumb and then you draw the mitten. So we'll draw the palm and we'll show the thumb and then we'll do the mitten. And I'll just do it really quickly down here. So you have the um, wrist, the palm, the mitten and the thumb. Now you break the mitten part in half and then you break that half once more. So then you have one finger, two fingers, three fingers, four fingers. And then that's, and then you can detail um, all the fingers there, therefore. But that's the, that's, that's the secret is you, you figure out, you put the mitten and you break it into four parts, break it into half and then break that half into half. And then you add the details of the fingertips. It's remarkable because it's 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 um, always right. Yeah, I mean, it's not saying not saying your drawing is going to be perfect every time, but that thinking kind of helps. Um, let's add some straps, and I keep calling them straps, but they're bracelet lines. They could be folds. They could be like metal bars linking the different parts of the the suit together. Looks like there's a whole rectangle attachment here. You would think that they probably have Why elbow they elbow pads. Able to have metal bars. What? Wouldn't that be uncomfortable? I think at, like in order to, I think you have to like seal the wrist. So I think the glove actually like has a metal attachment that you know seals um, the you, know, you have to be closed off completely from the atmosphere. I guess they do a yeah. lot of testing. These suits through. are very, they're very heavy. And you don't just like go to outer space. You have to have like at least three years of training. That's right. I'm gonna start my training now. It involves a lot of training. Are you allowed to have bagels in your diet when you're training for outer space? Mm, no. What? Only in the first year, Trevor. But I know, uh, but I know uh, that astronauts eat different food. Like they, I do too. So. Their ice cream is literally dry, and it tastes so good, though. I love dry ice cream. Astronaut ice cream is the best. Um, all right, so we. Just, I feel like we should add the jetpack. We've got a couple more minutes. I'm gonna add this jetpack here. Why does he need a jetpack if he's in space, which has no gravity? I think you can still. I mean, can jetpacks move in a vacuum? They can move the astronaut because it's it's pushing the astronaut forward. Off of what? It's like he's vacuum. doing a truss fall, but like forwards. Are these like antennae? <clears throat> you forgot to draw the thing that connects them to the ship. Yeah, you the forgot cord. to draw the cord yeah, that connects right. them. Thank you, Kate. That is very important, or otherwise you can get lost out in space. Yeah, no one wants that.
And also in space, it might feel like three days in space, but it's actually like two years in Earth. <laughs> That's what like you could that. like I could go out to space like right now and then when I come back like all my classmates would be in seventh grade. I don't I don't think that's I don't think time works like that. But that's an it interesting, does. That's it an does. interesting it does. concept. It feels like a sh but it feels like a short time in space when it's a long time on Earth. It's like 2020. Like 2020 felt like it was five years. What's up, y'all? Come on in. <clears throat> Um, we also have this planet, which is kind of cool. I don't. It's like an. It's not a real planet, but it's not a real planet. you can still put it in there. It looks like Jupiter. It does look like Jupiter. I'm sure that was probably the basis for it. Um, we have like a minute. If you think you can squeeze that in, I say go for it. You might want to erase the big glove. Oh, I wonder if I could just. I mean, should we make it outer space? Like, should we fill in? Yeah. The background? Is that crazy? He's in outer space. It's okay. I was just thinking, mm. like, that was a really good point. I'm like, how could I remove that? And I'm like, well, actually, the background is really dark. And I started putting some stars in there. And then I started seeing Jupiter. But Jupiter is a light object up against a, you know, the void of dark space. And the, the picture looks cool because the astronaut and the planet are white with black lines. And then- Yeah, the high contrast. Keep going. Please Kate. leave the paper for the stars. Yeah, so this even though yeah even though class is kind of ending okay so you know you how could, I told you could still you, you could still you could still finish you know um, how i told you to draw the line that connects them to the ship now that we're drawing the planet it does the the line doesn't go anywhere what if i connect the what if i connect it to the planet okay so maybe the ship landed on the planet mm -hmm. right i like that idea does anyone want to hold up their the artwork? Line. She made it back. Unbelievable. Did you do a turn? Did you do a spin? Did you do a twirl off the bar? For the first time? Congratulations. Actually, I didn't do it, but I have to practice it. Good boy. Um, so I'm going to stop the share just so I can see some of the stuff. Um, and then we got to roll. But um, let's see. Hold that nice and still, Patrick. Let's see, Spence. Hold on. Hold on. Let me hold it. I'm gonna, I got I to gotta pin everybody. Pin. Pin. Oh my gosh, look at that smiley face. That is the, happy, I love that is the happiest that. astronaut I've ever seen. All right, Spence, let's see what you got. And replace pin. Yes. I want to say hi. You can lean in and say hi. Good work, dude, even from the car. Great work. Kate, let's see what you got. Not done. I know, but it looks awesome. Lassie, I'll pin you next. Replace pin. I'm drawing a hanging light. Oh, yes. What a good day. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. You're, That's you're, great. Um, yeah. The suit is incredible. And so is the world. The little What's the, the moon. Oh, no. That's the um, Zoom call number. Oh. Um, Kate, can you hold it up or no? Stace, can we see what you did? Yeah, I'll hold mine up. Sure. Kate, I'm repinning you. Last year, great work. Place I'm going to the other side. Oh, nice. Black on white or white on black. Did you paint that whole thing? Yeah. What is that? Is that your space suit? Well, it's, uh, it's uh, going to be a hanging light bulb. And then I'm going to put a quote that I found. 
Ready? I'll read you the quote that I have. I'm Happiness can be found even in the darkness of times if one only remembers to turn on the light. Oh, you got to let your light shine. It's great. Jenna, lovely. Don't put it under a bushel. Bye, Jenna. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much. <laughs> keep, making, keep making art this week, and I will see you all next time. There you go, Trevor. Oh, wow, Stace.